What is going on guys and welcome into the video. Well, the market is just on an epic run and this earnings season has been completely different than the past three or so earnings season. It just hasn't honestly made any sense. And that is because there are five core reasons we are not seeing the devastation like we did in the past earnings seasons. But there is a way you and I can totally screw this all up too. I mean, not the Fed, not the market, but you and I as individuals. So we will cover that today too, so you can avoid your own disaster. We got enough disasters going around. We don't need to create another one on our own, so stick around for that too. I just ask an exchange for you to gently tap that like button and consider subscribing too. It's super easy to do if you like the truth about the hype. All right, so let's just jump straight to it. The first reason we are not seeing a lot of devastation, even with earnings misses, is because a lot of the bad news is honestly already priced in. And let's look at Meta for an example. Now, don't get me wrong. I know they missed. And I know that they fell, but Meta was priced for far worse, not just a small miss like we got. And the rumor kind of going around was Wall Street already pricing in these numbers that they actually showed. And there was already talk that they were going to lower guidance as well coming during this report. That means this miss and that guidance were not bombshells or unknown. Both were already kind of floated around out there, intentional or not, it doesn't matter now. The point was the market already knew that that was being floated out there. Also, a lot of stocks traded down coming into earnings because everyone was expecting far worse than the analyst predictions and many companies like Meta. Basically for virtually every stock out there, the worst case was already baked in, not just for the stock, but also the economy as well, because we got that news this week. So any earnings that was not a complete disaster was actually already priced in and expected. The market also priced in GDP contracting a lot more than we got on Thursday. Now, yes, we contracted, and yes, we are in a recession too, but the fall was less last quarter than it was the prior quarter, and not a disaster that everyone was worried about, and a disaster priced into the stocks coming into this week and last week. Basically, they priced in a disaster with GDP and a disaster with everybody's numbers, and we didn't get that at all. And speaking of earnings, the second reason is because bank earnings almost across the board and the commentary they gave provided proof so far of this recession being kind of the mild variety because of the strength of corporate and personal balance sheets and strength in demand overall. Listen to all the earnings calls. I've actually personally done that for almost every bank's earnings since they give me a much better picture on what is actually going on with the economy and the consumer than virtually any other piece of data out there and definitely better than what the news is gonna tell me. Kind of the common thing throughout was that they are all seeing very similar things and all gave very similar takes on what they are seeing. So let's settle the debate right now this second. Are we in a recession or not? Well, I don't care about any of the political BS from both sides where one says we are not in a recession and the other side says we are on the brink of a great recession that could lead to a depression. That's just stupidity on both sides and an utter waste of anyone's time. We are in a recession regardless of what anyone says. And for now, it is also a very mild recession regardless of what anyone says. Could change completely, I agree. But for now, it is a mild recession and there is no solid indication that it will be anything but a mild recession. Bank earnings and commentary back this up completely. Not political nonsense that I don't listen to. And third, the market is running out of sellers because valuations actually matter. Look, the market is not just a place where everyone is willing to sell everything into oblivion. That's just not how the stock market works. Big money especially does not have any interest in doing that and the bulls far outweigh the bears in terms of market participants and it seems like the folks that bought the dip are deciding to just hold and are not trading it nearly as much as they were before if they're trading it anymore at all. Again, this could change, but for now, even bad news or disappointments are not bringing about the mass selling like we saw earlier this year when I would argue that stocks were overvalued still. Could it be that investors are looking at valuation of many companies and saying, this valuation is just stupid silly and the company has the balance sheet to weather a downturn and the right management team to navigate the ship through it and in some cases they actually have better demand and better products and better services that the people really want and continue to buy. Could it be that valuations matter not only in a hype cycle, but also in down crash cycles too? We have only been talking about valuations for a couple of years now on this channel. Very few people believe me during the hype cycle last year when it was every penny stocks to the moon. I mean, I know channel after channel blew up much larger than mine in a matter of weeks pumping all that crap. And the nasty comments I got were crazy because I called those stocks stupid overvalued and people just blasted me for it. And now many did not believe me when the market crashed and stocks got stupid cheap, then stupid super duper cheap prices, and then ludicrous super duper dupe stupid prices. And I was busy buying those stocks. 
Many people in comment after comment kept pointing to charts and graphs that show when the market does this and it's a full moon and the third Thursday in a month that starts with a J and people eat pizza on that day, that proves the market is going to do this. I just kept right on buying and will continue buying based on valuation. So if it's an undervalued stock, that it's a great stock I want on long term, I'm going to continue to buy it and ask anyone in my group and group members comment down below too, but ask any of them if I was making any content in the group or sitting on our live streams we do all the time or in any of the tons of the Discord posts that I post in our Discord. Ask them if I was busy showing lots of pretty charts and graphs saying if this, then that on pizza on a third day, you know, whatever. Or was I simply talking about valuations, why they matter, why the market reacts certain ways to certain news, what it actually means if the Fed does this or if the Fed does that, what the truth is behind all the fear that is out there everywhere, deep discussions on actual market mechanics and all kinds of stuff like that instead. We are running out of sellers because valuation matters in the end. That is exactly what is going on right now. And don't forget to use that coupon code HODL for a discount to the group and that code actually expires tomorrow. I won't even bother pitching it here guys, just go to the website and see everything you get with it. All right, so on to the fourth reason. So far, and listen very carefully here, so far we have a clear Fed policy. Now I agree completely, the Fed did a poor job not getting ahead of this, they underestimated inflation, they started raising far too late in the game, and as a result they have far more that they need to reel in. But for right now, since November of last year or so, the Fed has told us what they are going to do, and the messaging has been clear, unlike in 2018 or whatever the heck, 2017, 2018, whatever it was, when the Fed basically shocked the markets and then didn't message anything properly, they did all that back then, but they have not done that this time around. They have not shocked us yet, and they have messaged appropriately. Each time they raised to those expectations that they set, and message clearly what they're looking at and what to expect next, the market kind of begins to trust them more and more. Now, yes, all it takes is one screw up to completely change everything dramatically. And yes, that's completely possible, I agree. But for now, the Fed has a clear policy and is following through on that policy. What Wall Street is thinking and doing shows me that for now, their level of certainty in the Fed is increasing. And we will get to your own self-created disaster here in just a second but we need to discuss the final reason we have not seen devastation after okay to poor earnings, and that is we have headwinds with foreign exchange. There have already been a lot of companies where revenue declined, and I saw this on multiple earnings calls actually, but their revenue declined, and the reason they declined was due to currency exchange and not lack of demand. This is actually the first time in a long time, and I'm not saying it hasn't happened before, but there's only been a handful of times in the history of the Euro where the dollar was actually stronger than the Euro. This hit every large international company's bottom line by billions of dollars in some cases. Many misses actually were not misses if this didn't happen. And many of the growth slowdown was not actual demand slowdown if the currency market was kind of somewhat normal. Now, yes, you take it when it benefits you and you take it in the shorts when it punishes you. But this is indeed a very rare scenario that does not happen often. The market knows that, so they are reacting accordingly. I mean, anyone can do the quick math and figure out that if this was normal times in the currency world, these earnings were actually better than reported and these earnings across the board kind of outside of a few disasters has not been nearly as bad as we actually thought they were going to be even when they take the hit for the currency exchange issue. Remember as an investor you should care about how the business is operating not how accounting rules make it look better or worse. Now you need to understand that so that way you can understand what you're really looking at but I am much more concerned with how the business is actually operating. Everyone was looking for slowing demand and you didn't get it from a lot of businesses the demand is still very strong, or it's actually slowing coming off the crazy past two years, but that's expected to do that. We are getting back to normal, so you basically are not gonna see those levels of growth in some companies ever again, because that was just a wild two years. But that doesn't mean that it's just cratered into the oblivion either. We're trying to find that get back to normal kind of place. And again, that's not for every company, it's just for some. There are some disasters out there, but not nearly as many as we thought we were gonna get. But how can you and I screw this all up despite what happens with earnings? I mean, how can we screw it all up? I have listened to 20 to 25 earnings calls so far this earnings season, and none has pointed to a giant meltdown in demand or a crazy meltdown in the economy or anything else even in that ballpark. Uncertain times? Yep, absolutely. Slowing down some from the breakneck pace of the past couple of years? Yeah, actually, some are slowing, some aren't, and are actually growing more. Economic devastation of biblical proportions, meaning a great recession or depression is here? I haven't heard that in a single one so far. I mean, maybe you have a comment down below if you have, but I hadn't heard one. Doesn't mean we can't go there. I'm not saying it's impossible, 
but until there is something actually tangible there and not just an if then chart discussing 75 indicators that tie together to show you how this applied to Brazil in 1875, so it will be true to the US stock market today, then I'm not concerned and there is nothing in the data to support that viewpoint. Ignore the noise. Don't listen to the news at all. All sides of the equation are wrong when it comes to that. Get out and see what is going on in real life. I mean, if you believe there is a food shortage or severe decline in the US economy, Ask yourself, why are restaurants open and packed all the time? I've been to 11 major cities in the US this summer so far. Restaurants were open and packed, and that was not the case in 2009 when we were in an actual terrible, bad recession. I know some of you are not old like me and remember that like it was yesterday, but the US was totally different back then than it is now. Ask yourself like I did when I first started hearing about a food shortage back, well, way back in March, I think is the first time I heard it. Why is my local grocery store and every other grocery store nearby packed with food to the walls except for purple Gatorade Zeros? I mean, I, I can get the red ones all day long, but no freaking purple. But other than that, it's full of food. Is that an actual problem rising to the level of a food shortage that we have not had here in the US since the Great Depression? No, it's not. And it's not even worth an ounce of thought at this stage if you live in the US. I can't speak for other countries, but here in the US, that's not a problem. Listen to the actual earnings calls and take notes is the point. But do not listen to a YouTuber's take on earnings, including me. Don't listen to me. Go listen to them for yourself. Don't listen to CNBC's take or Kramer or CNN or Fox or anyone else's take on earnings. Do your own work or your financial future will be at the mercy of someone else who is creating content to get clicks and make their audience happy and fit the narrative their audience wants so they can get paid more by their advertisers. They are not creating content for what is best for your investments. Only you can do that. And if you want a group of six and seven figure investors helping you through this chaos and you want direct access to me and a ton more, don't forget the coupon code HODL is expiring tomorrow for you to join and you get to keep that coupon forever as long as you stay a member, so don't miss out. And click this video here to see what I'm selling in this market and click this video here to see what I'm doing to make big money in this market. So thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.